Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel and thank you so much for being here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a tape stencil for a micro swipe. Really this could work for any kind of silhouette style pour where you want a nice hard leading edge and then your, your design flows off to the side. So my seahorse, my butterfly, um, various other micro swipes that I have done, I really like this silhouette effect. And I want to show you how I make the tape stencil because so many people have asked, how do you make the stencil? And I try to explain it every time and it feels like a pretty simple process, but you guys want to see it happen. So let me show you how I do it. I'm going to be using frog tape. This is another one of the suggestions that I've gotten. People say frog tape works so much better. Usually I use like a blue tape and that works great. But uh, frog tape also, that's what I'm trying today. So you can watch the video of me actually painting this to see, does this work better than the blue tape? I think it's a little bit more expensive than blue tape. It's not significantly more expensive, but uh, you know, whatever. So I use parchment paper. So this is kitchen parchment paper. And so go ahead and So I'm going to start with a piece that is about the size of my painting. You don't really need it that big unless your design is filling the entire canvas, which my Kingfisher is not, but um, I'll just start with this to show. And then you want to lay out a basic uh, shape of the canvas so that you can see where, like how big should this be compared to the canvas. So I'm just going to lay this down. You could also measure and just sketch approximately. But since I've got it right here, I'm just gonna make, and this is just a very rough estimate. So that as you're sketching it out, you know what will this look like on this scale. You see? Basic rectangle. This is a 12 by 24 inch canvas and my parchment paper is rolling up. Let me set this aside. Um, yeah. So this is the approximation of our canvas. So then you need to decide where is my thing, whether it's a heart or a seahorse or a kingfisher. I made myself a little sketch because uh, typically I would look at a picture as I sketch this out and all of my available computers and screens and everything is being used to film this. So I made myself a sketch and that way I have a reference of what I want here. But my Kingfisher is gonna be sitting on a stump, which I didn't draw in my reference sketch. So I think the stump should go up to about here. And this, the sketching is just to help you understand where it should be, how big it should be. Okay, so I don't know whether I'm drawing this slightly more off-center because the beak is so big here, but the tail is going to stick out this direction too. So I think it's going to be pretty close to this. And then they've got this nice spiky crest. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm doing a kingfisher. Uh, and you can watch that video here. If the link isn't popping up yet, it's because you have to wait until Monday to see it. Uh, but no, you can watch that video of me micro swiping a kingfisher so that is the the sketch that i'm making here but it can be it can be whatever you want to make so kingfishers have a nice crazy crest and then and it's okay if you're sketching 
is like, I can't sketch. All you have to do is like block out more or less. What should this look like? And if you have like a cricket or some kind of a, you know, a vinyl cutting tool, then maybe you find a silhouette online and you cut it that way. Um, but for the rest of us, you know, it's, it's not that hard to take a picture of something, especially a silhouette, and just kind of make the shape, make the shape of it. And it's okay if it's very sketchy at first, anyway. Okay. Yeah, so I think I'm happy with this. I like the position of it. I like the spacing this way also. So it's only about an inch from that edge. I'll have to try to remember that. Maybe a little bit more, we'll see. But it is gonna flow this way, so I wanna make sure that I have plenty of space to flow. No, this looks great. I like this. So now, because I have big sketchy lines, you just wanna tighten them up a bit so that you you know what you're going to be, like which line you're going to cut on. So go ahead and erase whatever, whatever lines you don't want. And the lines that you do want, make those nice and bold. I'm going to make this line right here a pretty hard line. Obviously there will be feet, there will be stump, but this is where I want my tape edge to stop. And also, this is where my tape edge is stopping, because this obviously will have to be swiped. So this is where I'm stopping my colors. So all that is, that's what I need. So take your tape, and put it down over the stencil uh, with more of the tape on the, the outside edge. So because I swipe from left to right because I'm right-handed, um, this, this is how I usually do my silhouettes. If you're left-handed, you'll probably have yours facing the other way and you'd be pulling the opposite direction. But whatever you have, make sure you have the tape wider, like on the side that you're not swiping to. Ta-da! That's all it is. So now, the way that we actually turn it into a full stencil is we flip it over. Do you see how you can still see the pencil line through the parchment paper? So we cut it out from this side. Okay, so that's all it is, depending on whether you want to keep this so that you can make more, uh, you can, or you can just, you know, detach it. Now that could be saved, or this half could be saved. This one might be the better half to save. Um, I've done that with my seahorse before so that I could reproduce it multiple times. If you keep the parchment paper, then it's very easy to make more and more of the same exact stencil. But get that out of the way. So let's bring the canvas back up and then we'll lay this tape out on it. Okay, so I'm reminding myself of where this should sit. So this is like eh, five inches from the top and this tape should be touching the edge. So then you just peel it off of the parchment paper, and because parchment paper is so smooth, 
it peels right off. It doesn't stick at all. This is the tricky part, is getting it to line up exactly how you wanted it to be. Oh yeah, this has to be over here. Shouldn't have put away my reference picture quite so fast. Apparently, I, I keep putting it a little bit too low down. Haha! -ha. That looks just about exact. Now, usually I don't actually do this where I lay it out exactly. I just kind of eyeball it and go, does that look close enough? But in this case, it's a strange enough shape, and I really like the way I laid it out on the parchment paper. So this looks great! And you never would know from looking at that, that that's going to be a kingfisher. So that's all for now. If you want to know exactly what I do before I put the paint on the canvas, you can watch the actual video. Um, so that will be right here as soon as the video is up. But yeah, come back and see it. It should be really fun. And this will be the first micro swipe that I've done on a colored background. So this will be a green, nice sage green background instead of just white. So I'm excited. But thanks guys for joining me for this little tip video. I hope it was helpful. Definitely let me know down in the comments if you have ever done a micro swipe and whether this helps you know how to make your stencils better. All right, guys, happy painting. Watch the Kingfisher video when it comes out. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.